This summer I had a lot of fun. Dipped. It's wet. Atlantic coast. Next dip, west coast Lopez Island. I drove with my wife across the country. We drove from here to uh, the East Coast. Uh, ended up in Bar Harbor, Maine, and uh, I got on my bicycle and rode it across the country, back here to home on Lopez. The total trip was just over 4,700 miles, according to my Strava logs. I averaged about 57 miles a day. I visited a total of 12 states including the home state of Washington. We'll throw in a foreign country, the province of Ontario, I believe, as I went across the north side of Lake Erie in Canada. I started pedaling on May 20th and arrived here on Lopez August 31st. My desire to go on a long bike trip started when I was about 14 years old. I was living in Utah, a couple guys came through on their bicycles fully laden and uh, they told me they're what they were doing, they were riding cross country and through the Rockies and I thought that was the, the best thing ever. I really enjoyed riding my bike. I knew that he wanted to do this adventure probably when COVID started and he was watching a lot of YouTube shows. I proposed the idea to Susan and she's like, oh, I, I'm, I want to be in on this adventure too. I was totally on board to do this trip from the get-go. I did not need to be talked into it. So she was very, very interested in going, which made it great for me. I was super excited to go visit new parts of America and new cities. I love to travel, so I was very excited to do that. She had no interest in, uh, in cycling at all. But she wanted to maybe bring her bike along and we could, you know, ride together for short stretches some days. When you start your adventure, everybody that goes coast to coast will dip their back tire in the coast that they're leaving and then dip their front tire at the coast that they arrive on. And some people dip both. And that was, that actually gave me pause when I did it because I'm gonna, I got these brand new wheels and I'm gonna dip them in that corrosive salt water. And uh, so I, I had some little uh, wet naps that uh, got some good use getting the salt off me the first day. The excitement was really intense in the beginning for sure. I remember day one just blazing out of town and then having to correct myself and slow myself down because I have a heart rate monitor and I could see that my heart rate was a little high just with the excitement. My typical day was pretty much never typical. Some days I would go for a bike ride, some days I would go for a walk, some days I would stay in the campground and just enjoy the beautiful scenery and maybe read a book. Um, some days I would be leaving super early to go visit a garden or an art museum or a cute little coastal town. So my day really varied every day depending on where we were at. <laughs> so generally the, the first especially the first half of the trip. I would say I was on the road between eight and nine o'clock. My ride style was such that I would try and take a break about every hour. Then by noon-ish, or after like three hours, I would uh, look for some more, some sustenance. If I, if I had each day planned out as far as I knew what services were gonna be on the road. And so if I could find a, a deli in a town or a a subway, something like that, that would be my favorite. That would be my first choice. If there was nothing, then we're uh, looking at bananas and kind bars. <laughs> Later in the afternoon, if I could find an ice cream shop, that was a huge bonus. A little bit of sugar in the afternoon really kicked it in gear. If that wasn't available, maybe a mini mart that had some sort of caffeinated coffee drink, and that usually would pick my, pick my energy and spirits up and make that final push. 
some days I would follow his route. Some days we would plan to meet for breakfast in 15, 20 miles, or maybe possibly plan to meet for lunch at a specific time. And so I would get to the town and um, maybe be waiting at the restaurant. A um, couple times we just happened to roll into the same town and we just happened to see each other, which was fun. And we would maybe go get some ice cream or go sit in a park. Other people's wives would say, God, oh, don't you get bored? You know, you, you must read a lot. And she's like, yes, I do read a lot, but actually not while I'm not during the day. Uh, she was, she had her own itiner itinerary of uh, gardens or other towns, you know, destinations she wanted to investigate and they weren't always on my route. So I might go this way and she would go around. I never got bored. Um, never ever did I ever get bored. I just had a blast. I, I'll admit it was a little frustrating for me in the beginning because she would be at the end of the day going, oh, I am just exhausted. You know, I saw so much today and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. I rode my bike all day, but it wasn't just my adventure. It was our adventure. So we, we made adjustments and it worked out, I think, fabulously. My goal was always to arrive at camp before him or close to the time I thought he was going to arrive so that the van would be there, his clothes would be there, he could take a shower, I could start setting up our chairs, maybe start working on getting dinner ready. We didn't have the luxury of being able to pull into any campground and getting a spot. A lot of campgrounds, if you're on your bicycle, they'll make room for you. But when you have an RV or, or a van in our case, you have to have a space at a campground. And so knowing that I had to have that planned out, I did a lot of research and discovered the people in, in my age bracket, give or take, uh, said that 55 to 65 miles seemed to be a pretty good sweet spot for them. And so looking at Google Maps and what campgrounds and or motels, hotels were available every 50 to 60 miles, that's how I planned my route. Good morning from the Adirondacks. It's about uh, 7, 7.30 this morning. Got off to an early start, trying to beat the rain that the weather guessers say are coming. Uh, gonna be sad to leave the this area. This has been a few days of just beautiful riding. The people that we met along the way were super interesting. I thoroughly enjoyed talking to different people in different states. We did meet many people that were self-supported and they were carrying all their gear and they may have been camping, they may have been staying at motels. And, and most of them were pretty envious of the fact that Don had me as a supported vehicle. Meeting the people along the way is a big part of the ride and other tours will say like, oh, this, the people I met were just so friendly and helpful. I was really looking forward to that. Whenever I went into a bar or restaurant or a rest area, either people would come up and, and ask me, you know, hey, where are you going today? Or where are you coming from? And then I, oh, I really had fun telling them like, well, actually I'm starting from here and going to there from coast to coast. And uh, yeah, a lot of people were surprised, but it also is a great icebreaker and met a lot of fun people. I really enjoyed meeting people that were super interested in what we were doing and were fascinated and surprised by this journey that we took upon ourselves. They would come up to us and say, are you really from Washington or is that a rental? And I'd say, no, we're really from Washington. And they were, well, what are you doing here? And why are you here? Why are you here? <laughs> and so that was, uh, that was a lot of fun. I was really curious to see how people got along all across the country, you know, and how interactions were. You might hear about divisiveness here and there, but I'll tell you what, everything I saw, people just want, uh, want their pursuit of happiness, and uh, if you engage with them in that, with that respect, everything was just wonderful. The most charming uh, and friendliest and engaging uh, people that we met were mostly in South Dakota. They were, it was such a lovely experience that, uh, that I just thoroughly enjoyed. I was really looking forward to interacting with other tourers because other cyclists know what you're going through and I like to hear how they were going about their journey. 
I was uh, fortunate to meet people from various countries and age groups and professions, from guys that were just 20 and 21 taking off on their dad's old bikes and going very minimalist, to older professionals that were on very nicely appointed bikes and they had their credit cards ready for their, for their next stop. One of my favorite encounters was at a mini mart in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming at Muddy Gap. It was uh, two older ladies and they call themselves Grannies on the Go and they have a little Instagram page they've put together and they're from Santa Fe, New Mexico. A week and a half later, I met them in the Tetons. Uh, we were at the same campground and so uh, we had some great chats with them and it, those in, in encounters were really fun. Maine was uh, one of my favorites, the, though I will say that it really reminded me of Washington um, with lobster. And so that was probably my favorite state because I'm pretty sure I had lobster every day and had a, had a blast with it. We would go into a little cafe where all the locals were eating and wear our little bibs. And I would proudly say, yes, I'm a tourist. And yes, I'm happy eat, breaking my own lobster here. So that was super fun. I was aware of certain major bike paths, you know, across the U.S. That's just a great way to get away from traffic and for, if you can ride a long distance uh, without worrying about that, that just seemed like a great way to go. I remember getting to my very first one. It was you know, maybe only a couple miles long in Maine, but boy, I was, I was really excited. And they were great. And the good thing about those, that we had actually planned with uh, Susan for her to either uh, start with me in the morning. We would ride the bike path for you know an hour or so, and then she would turn back and go back to the van and then you know meet me at the end. Uh, or at the end of the day, she would get on one and ride back towards me and try and find me. I also brought my e-bike on the trip, and I also rode with him periodically. And my favorite uh, times of riding with him was when we had some most amazing, beautiful bike trails that were either paved or crushed gravel. Three. The bike trails were amazing. And then I also did a fair amount of biking by myself. Hey, currently at the uh, Erie Canal towpath, bike path. Oh my gosh, this is pretty sweet. So there's the Erie Canal. I don't know if I'd want to drink or swim in it, a little dicey. The challenges with the weather were interesting in that they were so varied. We encountered many thunderstorms, but they tended to be later in the day. Hail, hail, the gang's all here. <laughs> it, today's a scorcher! It's been up to uh, 93 and muggy too, a little uh, humid, so it's toasty, but uh, the shade in the trail makes it lovely. All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks for following along, and I appreciate um, all your encouragement. It really makes a difference. The heat uh, did play a role, and I was <laughs> introduced to this thing called humidity on the East Coast that I haven't really dealt with that much here. And uh, that was pretty oppressive. And then there were some days where just flat out dry heat in the West. It wasn't bad when you were riding because when you're riding, you have the you know wind hitting you. And I wore a head buff and a helmet liner. And on a real hot day, you know, every hour along with recharging my water bottles, I would drown you know those things and put those on, and that would help keep me really cool. That I can remember sometimes pulling over and just taking my headgear off and just dipping it in the creek and putting it back on and wow, what a difference maker that would be. And at the end of the day, I'm doing this just for fun. And it was just all about enjoyment. So if I wasn't enjoying myself, I would, we would make steps to correct that. The heat, you know, for me wasn't so bad because I was driving a van with air conditioning. And uh, I will admit there were times that I would just maybe wait in the van for an hour uh, at the campground where it was 110 and just not open the door until it was too hot. <laughs> so one time we showed up at this campground and it was uh, it was blistering hot. This was in uh, when we first got into Wyoming. Went to the campground, there weren't a lot of trees, it was fairly barren and uh, I sat down in the shade of a little tree with Susan and we thought about what we were going to do and the black fly started to bite us. 
and uh, that was it. I'm thinking it might have been 110 degrees and cooling down to like 80 at night and we both decided that that just didn't work for us and so we would bail on the campground idea and look for a motel with air conditioning. And so during some, some hot places we had campgrounds lined up but we diverted to the air conditioning just so that it was important that I got a, a good night's sleep so I could carry on without suffering. <laughs> What kind of dog is this? Oh, he's a snapper. Why? Doggy, you go into woods. Bye bye. Since I spent so much time going over my route and, you know, basically nearly every mile, uh, I was aware of alternate areas I could go. And so some days I would be on a, a busy highway and go, I'm just tired of this busy highway and I know there's a side street over this way. It's not as direct, so I would take that. Um, and then my favorite encounter that I was looking forward to actually was the road closure signs because I know that a lot of times if you're a cyclist, you're able to go through those areas as long as there's not like a bridge that's completely washed out. So that was fun. You would have the whole road to yourself. My biggest challenge was when a deer leapt out in Michigan and uh, <clears throat> a nice, uh, uh, busy, windy road going 55 miles an hour and going around a bend and all of a sudden this deer smashes into the side of the door. I was quite stunned, pulled over and was like, what the heck just happened? And then quickly thereafter, a gentleman in a big truck zoomed over, threw the deer in the back of the truck and zoomed off and I thought, what the heck just happened? <laughs> so that was probably my worst day of the trip. Well, hello. We are uh, in the middle of the Minnesota farmlands, and uh, we're in the, uh, the plains. Not an airport plains, but like prairie plains. <laughs> anyway. It seems like a lot of the blogs I would read, they would have, you know, their little themes. Some guys really enjoyed barns. Some people, you know, the old cars that would pass them by. And I had also read about, um, especially in the Midwest where it's flat, is you could see a water tower out in the distance, you know, maybe as far as 10 miles out. And so when you saw it, you knew you were getting close to a town. And so when I clued into that and saw those water towers that marked that you know, I was getting close to my next rest break or supply station, I got pretty excited about him, and so I decided to, I would give me an, ex an excuse to pull over and take a photo and take a break, and so I got a little affinity with water towers now. I thoroughly enjoyed the diversity of all that we did with, you know, the northern New York and in all the different areas in Michigan and all the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes were just phenomenal, um, the Upper Peninsula. And then, you know, cute little town in Wisconsin. I, on the 4th of July, went to this a little town called Cable, Wisconsin, had breakfast, and they were having, you know, a, a local sale and, and a farmer's market. The whole small town experience was just exactly what I wanted. Crossing every state line was a big deal. The first one, the second one, and then after that, you know, okay, this is, this is part of the ride. Another big one was like, oh, I made it to South Dakota. Are you kidding me? South Dakota. I rode my bike to South Dakota from Maine. Woo, loving it. Oh man, here in the Badlands, a couple years ago, this wasn't even on my radar. This is unbelievable. Anyway, well, there's no any way about it. This is. This is once again ridiculous. So uh, yeah, I'm not suffering at all. Westington Springs, South Dakota, hands down was my favorite town. <laughs> the people there, small town, were very sweet, very charming, very kind. We showed up at this little cafe for breakfast thinking they opened at 7 a.m., but we got there at 6.45. And the gal came over and she opened the door and said, come on in. And she says, I don't open until 7.30, but come on in. I saw you out there. What would you like? And she started making us breakfast. And, and even though she didn't have to open for another half hour, 
She was super curious about what we were doing. She was fascinated and she was just, just so sweet and kind. And, and it was just, a, just such a lovely, lovely experience. When I first retired to Lopez, I didn't know too many people. And, uh, and I wanted to find some of the people I could ride my bike with. And uh, one day I was at the south end of the island and there was a guy taking a break at one of my favorite rest spots at Agate Beach. And so he was visiting from uh, Colorado. I told him about my trip and uh, he said, hey, if you're going through Colorado, you should spend the night at my place. And so we did. Uh, he was a very generous host and he said, I, I would uh, maybe like to join you when you get close to my, to my home. And so he came out and met me in South Dakota and we rode through the Badlands and through the Black Hills together for about four or five days. And uh, boy, riding you know with a friend, it just makes those miles just melt away and you don't even realize that you're going anywhere. What's around the next corner? And it's fun to you know, share the excitement of like, wow, look at this scenery or, or you know, look at that. And so each day was just, pointing each other out, you see this, you see that, and just you know, sharing the, the excitement of the adventure. It was fun. The Badlands was some of the highest high and the lowest low all rolled into one. That was a, a stretch where we wanted to hit a remote campground because A, it was no charge, and B, it, it had some gravel to get there and to leave from there. And I thought, I want to try and hit all road surfaces on this trip. But when we got to the campground, it was hotter than hot. There was prairie dogs everywhere, and they brought their friends called the Black Flies, and they were relentless. Mike and his wife and two boys were in this enclosure with Susan and I, just hiding from the flies and trying to create a breeze. And once the sun went down, it cooled off and was very comfortable, but <laughs> I'll admit we were miserable for a few hours there. For It was not much fun. The next day, was a big climb in the gravel getting out of this valley. Into the gravel, I was very excited to see the pavement. I, I, I might have kissed it. <laughs> One of my favorite things on this trip were the sunrises. Everywhere we went, I would try to get up before the, the sun would rise. And that was one of my most favorite times of the day was the quiet, the peace, the birds, the beautiful sky in all the different states. Riding the Black Hills into Mount Rushmore. That was my favorite day of riding roads on a bike in my entire life. It was spectacular. The Iron Highway is what it's called there, and they did a good job of going through granite hillsides and carving out small tunnels, and each tunnel framed Mount Rushmore, so as we were getting closer and closer and closer to Rushmore and each tunnel framed it and we were a little bit closer. But boy, it was very hilly, but when you climb up a hill, you get to hit the blaze down the other side and those were some of the best, the best downhills I've, I've ever been on. And just the scenery was spectacular. And the hardest part of that day was actually the last two miles getting up to Rushmore. That was 10% of straight up and it didn't level off at all, but that was a great day. This is what I'm having to ride through. I'm suffering once again today. These views are just spectacular, are you kidding me? No wind, slight uphill. What's not to like? Grinding away, doing a climb. That's what's behind me. Not too bad. <laughs> this is super fun. Even though I'm working super hard, it's worth it. My other favorite place was being in the Tetons and the scenery in the mountains and riding our bikes and the beautiful lakes and then going to the Sawtooth Mountains and just being in these just stunningly beautiful scenic places. Every single mountain pass was a joy to get over. Even when you're on the coast of Maine, you're going over uh, lots of you know rolling hills and one person told me he goes well you know what the view is at the next top of the next hill don't you I'm like no what is it he goes well it's the view of the next hill to climb and so uh, I c learned uh, quickly to to adopt that and and not be 
uh, disappointed at your view at the, at the top of the next hill, but each mountain pass, the first few I was very apprehensive about, you know, how much is this gonna take out of me and how many days that, maybe that's poor planning, but it seemed like, boy, I would be 40, 50, 60 miles into a ride and you got a 10 mile climb at the end and that would just be daunting. And so uh, getting over those passes, boy, I was super excited to, to get to the top. Yes, made it to the top. There's the evidence sign. Oh my gosh, it was a grind, I'm not gonna lie. It was tough, but uh, we made it super, super stoked. There is always museums, a jackalope museum, a stagecoach museum, a train museum. One day going to Arco in Idaho from Idaho Falls, that was a, a long, desolate stretch and I was looking forward to a rest stop. And I kept seeing signs for uh, a, uh, a historical nuclear site. It was one of the first uh, nuclear breeding sites. And so I thought, I need water and I can see where it's at. I'm gonna go for the sure thing. And so I went out there and it was cool inside there. They had water and restrooms and uh, <laughs> had a lot of fun with uh, goofing off with some dials and some levers. <laughs> I learned a lot about bike touring and routes and things from this crazy guy on a bike website. And on this site, they've got thousands and thousands of journals on there. And so I decided I'll just journal every day and take a bunch of photos so that when I'm done with my trip, I can look back and remember my experiences. And also I wanted to, you know, maybe be detailed enough so that if other people were looking for route information or where to stay in certain areas, I could share my experience and uh, maybe give some other people some uh, good ideas. At the end of every day, at some point, I would sit down and put my thoughts to paper. It allowed me to put photos in there. And I tried to put it like a little story in there every day too. I enjoyed putting it together. Susan had a little bit of difficulty in the beginning because we also had the ritual of sharing our experiences throughout the day verbally to each other. And uh, once that was done, I was focused on writing this blog up. It admittedly took more time than I thought it would. I had so much fun putting it together. In reading other tourists' blogs, they always get to a point where, you know, they don't have cell coverage because they're in the middle of nowhere, or the, the campground doesn't have any uh, internet connection. And so they would always respond, you know, start their blog by, oh, I got a lot of you were concerned, you know, that I've been missing for a few days. He goes, but I just haven't had any cell service. And, and so I ran into that same thing. And uh, that was actually heartwarming to get messages from friends saying, hey, are you okay, buddy? We've been following your blog and you haven't posted for a few days in the, be in the beginning because uh, they would get used to it later on. I think the hardest thing for me was moving every single day in that I wanted to stay. I, you know, all these places that I thought, gosh, I wish I could just stay here for another day or two. And that was really hard. Most places were so beautiful and stunning that I would have loved to have stayed another day. There was a point in the trip, and I have to laugh at myself at this point, where I said to Don, you know, we don't have to go home when we, you know, we don't have to go, we don't have to follow the schedule. We can slow this trip down. I think he probably looked at me like, are you crazy? <laughs> and so I was like, well, it's just an idea. I just wanted to see if that was gonna stick. And, and then, um, you know, we, then we got going you know, a couple more weeks and then towards the last month I was like, all right, let's get this trip over with, month, let's go. Let's get this done. <laughs> let's get home. <laughs> hey, I made it to the Pacific time zone. Can you believe it? Boy, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one too. Another, uh, another fun milestone. The view of the uh, mountains here in this valley on the way to Sisters is spectacular. Uh, yeah, this has got to be a, uh, an awesome day. I got to rate this one a 10. When I got to Oregon, I'm like, well, now I'm in fam kind of familiar-ish country and I'm only one state away from Washington. And then uh, 
admittedly, I was excited the day that I came, you know, into my own state, but crossing that particular border was not a lot of fun. It was on the, a big bridge going into Longview and it had a nice shoulder, but there's a lot of logging truck traffic there. And so the bike lane that you have to ride in was clogged with chunks of bark. And so I was really focused on what I was doing rather than enjoying the ride. And hey, welcome to Washington. So. My daughter and I conspired to surprise uh, Dawn in, on the trip. Uh, and so we, were, we looked at different weekends and then it worked out for her to meet us in Chehalis. And that day, Susan uh, was riding with me. She just said, she goes, uh, you know, I don't, there's nothing I really wanna see today. We're almost home. I'm just gonna kinda be ahead of you today and meet you in the small towns. And if you have an ice cream, I'll have one with you. If you have lunch, I'll have lunch with you. I followed Don along that day about every, you know, five, 10 miles. I'd be like, where are you going next? Where are you going next? And I'm sure he kind of wondered like, well, why is she doing this? And, but I had to keep track of exactly where he was. I noticed Susan pull out, in the, out of the road in, in front of me and make a left-hand turn. And so, oh, that's, she knows my route. That's where we're going. And so she's probably looking for a good place to park. And I wasn't sure if he was gonna go right or left. So I went left and and then I went, I tried to hide, which was kind of funny. And so he saw me, like, what's she doing, you know, over there? I saw Susan standing against this building on the left-hand side of the road. And I thought, well, that's weird. Maybe, maybe she just wants to be in the shade. Uh, and then I noticed ahead of me, there's some kids selling cookies or uh, maybe lemonade. Uh, I, did, I actually looked for, is there a car wash they're trying to advertise? Because these kids are, have these signs and they're jumping up and down and, and, and waving and whatnot. The grandkids and Alicia were across the street with big signs and banners and Don stops and looks at me like, what are you doing? And I'm like, but look, there's the grandkids. And then I, I heard my name being called and it was my grandkids. And my daughter, and I, yeah, it was, it was really amazing just to see those guys uh, take time out of their schedule to come see me. I was, I was, a, I was really surprised, and uh, it was, it was just super heartwarming. Say anything you want. I'm getting closer to home. Real anxious to get there. Had an awesome day with you guys yesterday. That was so fun. Thanks for coming to meet me. Bye bye. I reached out to my friends here on Lopez Island and said, Hey, would you guys mind? I'll buy some champagne. Can you guys? Uh, be waiting at the house and little did I know that they were way ahead of me. They had already been talking about, let's throw a surprise when they're coming home. The last day I was pretty excited about because A was on roads that I, that I knew they were gonna be a little quieter than what I had been doing before. And so I was really looking forward to that. And of course I was looking forward to, to getting home just to, back to the quiet uh, Lopez Island. I'm a planner and I kept saying to Don, I need to make a reservation for the ferry, so which ferry do you want to catch? And, and so he said, well, let's catch the 1230. Mind you, this is weeks ago. He goes, let's catch the 1230 ferry. And I remember thinking, oh no, 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 no. She goes, I would kind of like to hang out, you know, here in uh, Port Townsend. It's a, one of our favorite, you know, getaway towns. And uh, she goes, maybe we can just have like a late leisurely breakfast. The ferry schedule would work out, you know, if we left a little later in the day. The 12.30 ferry meant waking up at five o'clock in the morning, getting on, you know, in line in Port Townsend at six o'clock in the morning to catch, you know, the 7.30 boat. And then as it started to get right down to it, I'm thinking, man, I would, I would really like to get up early, it would be great, and just catch earlier boats and get back home soon. But I'm thinking, we've got this party planned, and I don't know if I can re-scramble everybody and, and, and frankly, I didn't want to get up at five o'clock in the morning. So um, maybe the guilt trip of my fine, go ahead and do that, but I won't, <laughs> it worked. Cause he said, okay, fine. We'll catch the 515. <laughs> Thank you for 
we got to Lopez, excited uh, when the boat pulls up to the dock and announces arriving Lopez Island. That sent a little uh, jolt through me. We get off the boat and I see my, uh, my friend Ken <laughs> in the distance with a camera in his hand. Welcome home. <laughs> hey, Hello, mister. It's good to see you. Good to see you. You made it. You did it. I, I, you were blending <laughs> in with the crowd there. I could hardly tell where you were. It was, it was about, I didn't have my, my Lopez colors on. Oh, there you go. Oh, man, it's great to be back. I bet. A lot of miles. Hard to believe. It's been awesome. Could tell. You're a great writer. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever been reading his blog? I have. Yeah. I have. That was fun to do. That's just... It takes a lot of time. It takes a little bit, but it's, I want to be able to look back and, you know, remember what was going on. Let's go for a ride, man. All right. We started riding up the hill, and Ken has an e-bike, and so I thought, hey, we can kind of light this hill up. I'm feeling pretty good. I've, you know, been out for a number of days, and uh, so we take off, and immediately, Ken, you know, you slow down, and I look back, and I... Are you out of battery power? Did you use it coming you know, across the island? Did you forget to recharge? What's going on? Anyway, he didn't really respond to me, and so I backed off my pace and waited for Ken to catch up. And uh, then on my left, a bike goes through, and it's a bike that I recognize, and the guy goes, hey, Don, welcome back to Lopez. And it's you know, my friend Greg. And he goes, well, there's more guys behind me. And uh, it was... It was the riding friends from the island. Uh, again, it took time out of their day to, to welcome me back. And that was, that was really, really, really something. So I was very, very surprised by that. It was fantastic, you know, to come off the island and, and see our friend um, there with his video camera and, and then driving up the road and then his other friends catching up with him. And, Coming down the road to my house, all of a sudden there's neighbors on the road and some and friends alongside the road and a big uh, contingent to welcome me back at my home. And so there was uh, my my wife and friends that conspired to, to to throw a good welcome home party. And man, what a great way to come back and finish the trip. That was that was the best cherry on the cake you could ask for. The traditional end to this particular section of the route ends in Anacortes, and so a lot of people dip their tire in Anacortes. And I thought, well, shoot, I live out on Lopez, that's even a little bit further, so I'll just dip my tire in, the, in my backyard. And so uh, that's what I ended up doing. Yay! Hey! Yay! It's official. Atlantic to the Pacific. It's possible. I just can't get back up the stairs, that's all. I just thought it was a, a great way to finish off, finish off the adventure. That's official. Tell you what, it's a great country. Yeah. Everybody, no matter what state, is freaking awesome. <laughs> it's just beautiful. But this is the best experience. Right? You know what? <laughs> yeah. I saw some beautiful places. <laughs> I hope you guys appreciate what we have here. Yes, we do. Man, it's awesome. It's the best place to live. You know, you know I, I didn't want to tell anybody else that, but <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what's going on here. I can't believe I pulled it off, uh, it, and that it worked out as well as it did. Um, so yeah, all my expectations were totally surpassed. The crows like it too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're welcoming, welcoming me back. Oh. 
She got me across. <laughs> but I did ride it every stinking inch, so. <laughs> Hey, never underestimate yourself. We are all capable of some amazing stuff.